Welcome, Welcome to, to History, History Nuts. I'm Russ Carson Jr., the founder of Family Tree Nuts. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for people and we produce videos at historic locations and videos that help to honor your ancestors. I'm Jameson Cable, founder of the Kentucky History Podcast, where we talk about anything Kentucky history, events, people, if it has to do with Kentucky, we're going to discuss it. And we've teamed up together to bring you History Nuts. History Nuts is a live show where we talk about, you guessed it, history. Right. History seems to be less and less to people today, but we are trying to do everything we can to keep it alive. Absolutely. History is a passion of ours for sure, but it connects to you. For us, tell us about the best part of the show. You can join in. You can comment and ask questions live. We've got a great topic today, and we know you're going to enjoy this episode of History Nuts. We are talking about tonight the history of Louisville. 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 Yeah. Louis Louisville. No. Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> Lou Louisville. Louisville. You get that Louisville. 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 Yeah. So everybody in the United States pronounces it about 17 different ways. I've seen it on T-shirts, <laughs> coffee cups, you know, all the different spellings. Here in Kentucky, we say Louisville. 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 L U L V U L. <laughs> Louisville. Now. Louisville. And you got to put there some you. marbles in your mouth. When you you say that, yeah, right? you gotta get the tongue. The tongue's gotta be in there. Louisville, <laughs> <laughs> you got. I, I, I got to yeah, Everybody yeah, practice yeah. that. Louisville. Those people that are yeah. not from there. So, but, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm well, really excited my, about this show. Go because there's so much stuff about Louisville in there. There is, and I, just just to clarify, you should always pronounce a place by how the locals pronounce it, even if it isn't. Spelled correctly, or 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 pronounced correctly. <laughs> I understand. I think Kentucky has a few other places that they pronounce. Uh, let's just say Oddly. differently. Okay, differently. Differently sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> what's that little? What's that little town called just west of uh, uh, Lexington, uh, Vers Versailles? I Ver guess. Versailles. Oh yeah, no. Versailles, man. There's Versailles. sales on that. <laughs> Versailles. Whenever I have to put in my GPS, I put an address in there. I speak it. I have to say Versailles in order for my GPS uh -huh. to find it. What about that little? You know about that little community just south of Lexington? Starts with an A. Asbury? Capital, capital of Greece. Oh, Athens. <laughs> yeah, we don't call it Athens here. Though. We call it Athens, right? Athens. That's Athens down there, right? So, but uh, yeah, we're full of that, but. That's not the show at all today, is it? <laughs> no, no, not this is not a linguistic pronunciation <laughs> show. <laughs> That's right. But we want people to know that we have folks that watch from all over the country. It is mm -hmm. pronounced Louisville. 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 So we will for yeah. the rest of the show we'll say Louisville. So you know what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's a good topic though. Like we've talked a lot. I I, I said this before, you know, we talked about central. Or I guess I should say, should I say Main Central? You know, Boonesboro, Fort Harris. Yeah, yeah, uh, Fort Logan. We've talked about that region a lot, but you know, the big city of Louisville is up up there. It's also kind of being settled, populated, and growing as well. And we're gonna talk about that today. So, I have a question for you, Jameson, because you are a Kentucky mm -hmm. native, and a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of people may or may not know this, but I'm not a Kentucky native. I'm from just a little bit north of there, uh, across the river. But uh, is Louisville, Kentucky? Or is it, it? Yeah, man. Yeah. Are, are you sure? Because a lot I'm of people sure. in Kentucky, man, that ain't Kentucky, <laughs> man, that ain't Kentucky. That's Indiana. That's the Midwest <laughs> up there, buddy. Yeah. I, I I speak for myself, I guess, but Louisville is Kentucky. I, t I, I claim Louisville 100%. Now, some people, yeah, I guess they may not, but. Well, I think the reason they say that is because of kind of the, Louisville does, Louisville has a, well, 
it's kind of like the face of the entire Kentucky. Is it the north or is it the south? Is it mm -hmm. uh, Midwest? Is it uh, what? What is Kentucky? If you go to Mississippi, they'll tell you that Kentucky is definitely not the South. If you go to <laughs> Ohio, they're going to tell you that Kentucky is definitely not the North. You know, kind of <laughs> Louisville is a nice snapshot of that because even the people in Kentucky say, "Hey, that Louisville, that's Indiana, man. That's the Midwest." Mm -hmm. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. more of a I quite, I quite know, a little less. Southern yeah. hospitality, but definitely full of Southern hospitality. And in its history, it's definitely a Southern city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of, lot of rich history. I mean, you know, and we're going to talk about that a lot today. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's been there for a long time. And, and it, you know, it grew. It kind of had a back set, grew some more. I mean, uh, it's the most populated, you know, city in Kentucky, obviously. There's a huge population. You talk about, you know, Jefferson County. Or being the Louisville Jefferson uh, metro area and all that stuff, um, which you know we won't get too much into that, but uh, it's part of and, it's part and, of Kentucky, you know, man. It's on the other level. And as far as sports rivalries go and stuff, uh, are we first? <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It, everybody in Kentucky loves Louisville, the University of Louisville sports, don't they? Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now we're talking about geographic area, not, <laughs> not. Everybody in Kentucky, we love we love Kentucky sports, UK sports, and we love University of Louisville sports, right? Ah, uh, uh, no, <laughs> no. I draw the line we, there. Kentucky <laughs> fans hate hate some Louisville <laughs> and vice versa, but uh, that's not yeah. the show. I just wanted. I, I'm bringing all this up because you know Louisville's history is is Kentucky history, and it is mm -hmm. deep. Deep, deep enriched in Kentucky history right from the get-go, but it is definitely a place, um, as a fellow that uh, grew up not in Kentucky, it was surprising to me that how much people throughout the state thought Louisville was an island kind of thing. It's an, it's not part of Kentucky to a lot of people, but but uh, I'll claim it. I like I like Louisville, yeah. so. Yeah. But, uh, hey, well, real quickly, too, uh, we already got some people commenting. <clears throat> um, and uh uh chiming in let us know where you're watching from and uh subscribe to the channels the youtube channels um family tree nuts and kentucky history channel um but michael bush says hello uh carol says hello um uh, michael also says um that uh i'm right that uh you know we're uk all the way <laughs> uh uh let's see ancestral stalker <laughs> Says being from Illinois and trying to find stories from area where my ancestors were. Uh, Summer Shade, Metcalf, Metcalf, Kentucky, and Greenup. So Greenup, Kentucky. Well, that's that's a uh, um, a little to the northeast. Uh, Greenup County. Um, yeah. So and then uh, yeah, so that doesn't come to us far. So let us know where you're from and where you're watching. Uh, but let's get into Louisville, man. Yeah, I saw that somebody said Russ is a ferner. It said ferner. But it said, uh, <laughs> man, I got dual citizenship. I've actually lived in Kentucky longer than I've lived in OHIO, but uh, with a little bit of time all over the world in the middle of that. But uh, yeah, Louisville history. You know, the area was actually made up of uh, six different uh, settlements in the area there. Um, mm -hmm. It grew up uh, um, di different towns and things like that. And the whole reason why Louisville is where it is is because of the river, right? And the falls. The falls of the Ohio. Have you ever visited the falls of the Ohio, Jameson? No, I have not. Is it kind of like uh, Niagara Falls? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's that. But <laughs> no, it, it's just some rapids, you know, in there. It's some rapids that, that you have to navigate uh, in order to get there. It, uh, um, it, it is less of a uh, navigational hazard today than it was in the past and things. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a place where if you're traveling down river, you needed to probably offload your supplies off of your, your, your keel boats or your boats mm -hmm. onto a dock carry the supplies down by horseback, run your boat down the falls a little bit, and then reload. 
So it was a very yeah. strategic spot as far as that goes. And it sits pretty much geographically right in the middle from uh, where the Monongahela and the Allegheny River come together in modern day. Mm-hmm. Pretty Pittsburgh. important point. I mean, Pittsburgh, uh, at the foundation of uh, Ohio and, and where it empties into the Mississippi River. So it's right, pretty much right smack dab in the middle of the Ohio. Mm-hmm. And, well, and you talk about like settlements and stuff and you think, I mean, this was legit. Louisville was legit made because of its geographical location. I mean, the, I mean, it just, people would go down the river and they couldn't cross the rapids or the falls. And so they'd have to get off and it just naturally would become a settlement, a big settlement. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah. W- w- was it, was there a native American camp there at the time? Although, well, I mean, I'm sure throughout time. Yes. Yeah, so what are you talking about a specific time here? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's such a strategic spot to European Americans, but it wasn't really a strategic spot to the in, indigenous people, you know, the natives that were there. Um, there has been native activities there since about 1000 BC. We said we're going to talk, oh, I forgot to mention Louisville history. So this this show is going to be about 17 hours and 47 minutes. So uh, we're going to do, but uh, so go ahead and get some popcorn and uh, get your coffee. <laughs> We, we've not even got into an actual year yet. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been on here. No, but seriously, we, we are trying to do a very, very, very short snapshot cliff notes of the history of Louisville, not of a certain decade kind of thing, mm-hmm. because it would take it take us all year to time. do shows. I mean, really, the history yeah. of Louisville wouldn't. But people have lived in the area since about 1000 B.C., or mm-hmm. BCE if you're an atheist, I guess, but uh, like Jameson, right? So, whoa, but, whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, just kidding, brother. I know you're far <laughs> from that. But uh, that would be a funny joke, man. But uh, <laughs> in, in, until about the mid 1600s, and the mid 1600s was when they had the Beaver Wars. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's an entirely different show. I could go in details if you'd like, but uh, we can move on forward from that. But, uh, when was the first European settlement? Uh, I mean, 1751, Christopher Jess, right? Is that who uh, came into the yeah. area? Yeah, yeah I, I worded that wrong. I get when was the first time. Well, I mean, there's oh, a well, whole discrepancy what... whether La Salle, the French explorer La Salle, actually came mm-hmm. there. He didn't come there. A whole nother show kind of thing. But, the you know, the first Anglo, yes, Christopher Gist in 1751 explored mm-hmm. all down the Ohio River region. There you go. Uh, now, uh, real quickly, uh, Don uh, Smith says, born in Kentucky, but uh, not in Kentucky. Sports fan, but watching from Ironton, Ohio. Uh, Martin. That's Arton. Martin? Arton, Ohio. It's not Ironton. Oh, Arton. Oh, Martin. there you go. Well, there you go. <laughs> hey, uh, that's a good pronouncement. Uh, um, Carol <laughs> said, Logan, Ohio. Um, uh, Lola Taylor Irvin listening from Middle Tennessee History in Southeast Kentucky. Bell County, and Vanessa Hall is watching from Norwalk, Norwalk, Ohio. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Irish Reb, Creek area, <laughs> and Ancestor Stalker says, "Was it one of the first settlements?" And I, I don't know if he's talking about the first settlements in Kentucky. If that was the case. No, it was probably. I don't know. What would you say? Like the. I mean, I'm just saying the number. Like if you had, you had Boonesboro. Um, you have Fort Harrod, Boonesboro, Fort Logan. I mean, I don't know. Florian Springs. Have, yeah. Uh, Lexington. I mean, it's maybe. Probably in the top Rodney. 10, I guess, maybe. Yeah, probably but, in the top 10. And we're getting yeah. ready to get and to if that. And if we're talking about, like, when, uh, which we'll get to this in a minute, George Rogers Clark set up camp and all that stuff. But, you know, anyway. Um, so, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Where well, we you know, in, you know, in 1769 to 1770, 1771 ish, Daniel Boone is exploring the area. Many say that Boone did travel. I mean, he was gone for two years, for goodness sake. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. out, of, out on his uh, trips and things like that uh, in the nude, actually. Uh, many times has been documented <laughs> that he was <laughs> traced into Kentucky. Well, you didn't know Daniel yeah, Boone he, was a nude, did you? Uh, he, he peed on every, every tree in Kentucky, I bet. <laughs> that would take some time, but uh, <laughs> you know, and 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 uh, 
1773, Thomas Bullitt, who, you know, Bullitt County, you've heard of Bullitt County, mm-hmm. Kentucky, uh, was exploring the area for the governor of, of uh, Virginia. And 1773, this is, re- this is relevant because, you know, when we think of uh, the history of Kentucky, we think of uh, Fort Herod, we think of Boonesboro, Fort Logan, all this kind of stuff. This is before that. 1773 is the same time that Boone was trying to make the first settlement here in Kentucky. But yeah. uh, Tom Bullitt was sent by the governor of Virginia, Lord Dunmore, to do to explore the area and look for uh, places to give land grants to uh, French and Indian War veterans. So kind of the mm-hmm. same thing that uh, Herod was, uh, James Herod was done, was sent to do in the bluegrass region, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, did, um, did Thomas Bullitt name anything or, or like that? Or did he make a claim to anything? Well, he just—I know that he explored the area, you know, kind of thing. He was, a, in a, and that's a whole nother show there. Um, who is mm-hmm. Thomas Bullitt? Man, Thomas Bullitt is a really cool guy um, of his activity in the French and Indian War himself. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't live much longer after his explorations into Kentucky. But uh, another show, man. I really try to stay focused cool. with this. Man, we can do <laughs> on this uh, as far as the history of Wool. Yeah. So let's and, let's let's let's. Uh, Skip, who, who is the first settlement? Let's get, to, let's get to that point. Who was the first settlement? The first settlement happened in 1778 by one of my personal heroes and a man that is tremendously forgotten in American history, the conqueror, the conqueror of the old Northwest, the George Washington of the West, General George Rogers Clark. Um, set up uh, a base right there on what's called Corn Island, which was out in the middle of the Ohio River and uh, right there at the Falls of the Ohio in mm-hmm. 1778. Now, okay, I'll interject here. You say Corn Island. I believe if what I read, I read this, it's been a while, but that uh, old Thomas Bullitt originally named Corn Island Dunmore Island. How about that? Yeah. Do you but know anyway, Corn Island? That's a weird name. Why would they name it Corn Island? Well, <laughs> did it have a lot true. of corn on it? You back up. They, he would have called it Dunmore Island because Lord Dunmore was the governor of Virginia at the time, and you always yeah. kind of kiss yes. the behind of the boss man, right? So that's what yeah. I think that yeah. they did you know, all the time. Here. But uh, we'll, we'll 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 get to some more behind kissing here in a minute. But uh, <laughs> absolutely, why Corn but Island? Anyway. Why was it named Corn Island? Well, because it was a ruse, you know, make a very, very, very long story short. And you and I have done uh, other videos about uh, George Rogers Clark, but mm-hmm. Kentucky basically continued to, to begin to be getting uh, attacked by Native Americans that were supported by the British Western Front of the Revolutionary War. George Rogers Clark petitioned the Virginia governor, Patrick Henry. Hey, let me go fight these people at the source. So he organizes the Illinois Regiment to go and attack the Native Americans at their own places. He went to Kaskakia, mm-hmm. Cahokia, and eventually conquered Vincennes, which is an mm-hmm. awesome, awesome story in and of its own. But he set up Corn Island. He started out in the modern-day Pittsburgh area, and, and he recruited about 80 civilian settlers to plant corn on Corn Island. Um, they used it to as a ruse. It was... It was uh, mm-hmm. You know, they didn't have the, the modern day cami net to cover up their, their storage operations there at their base. They uh, made it look like it was a settlement camp of settlers that were settling right there in the middle of the falls of the Ohio. Mm-hmm. Not because they were planting corn. There's a ruse. Well, they planted corn there, but they also wanted a supply depot there or a communication mm-hmm. point there, you know, uh, uh, between the old... Boone Trace and, you know, the old mm-hmm. uh, route of communication there uh, between yeah. for Clark's uh, invasion areas. And that's the funny thing about it. And, and, and I'm going to backtrack a second. This is 1778, but there's been white people around in the area that speak. They don't speak English, though. They speak French deep yeah. into the 1600s uh, living in these areas. That is pretty that is pretty wild. People don't realize that. Uh, so Clark goes off to battle, but does he take all the people with him? 
Well, he leaves the civilians behind there um, mm -hmm. to uh, maintain the fort there. Um, and he, you know, that's a whole other story of itself. Uh, he is extremely victorious. Um, mm -hmm. The defeats uh, Colonel uh, uh, Hamilton, the hair buyer, the despised uh, um, British uh, colonel there, and uh, sends him back to your neck of the woods there in uh, Fort Logan for a time, doesn't yep. he? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So what the bell track, uh, man. You know, we know too much about history. We're we're getting off track about <laughs> history a little bit, right? Kind of yeah, so what, what develops though after uh, you know so people stay back at the at Corn Island? Um, do they just stay on the island and then fill in well, around? Shortly thereafter, they uh, um, they made a fort that was on shore on the Kentucky side, and uh, they named it a pretty uh, creative name, didn't they, on the, on the fort that they did? Fort, oh yeah, the fort on shore. <laughs> yeah, Fort Onshore. That was pretty creative, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that took some thinking. <laughs> a fort on the shore, we just called Fort Onshore. But uh, <laughs> at Fort Onshore, you know, that, that that is actually, today you can find that. It's at the dead end of 12th Street. If you've never been there, it's an industrial area. Um, there mm -hmm. is an historic marker there, but that is where the fort, and you can actually look across and see you know, the falls of the Ohio, you can see George Rogers Clark's home over there on Indiana side there, mm -hmm. but uh, that's where they put the fort. But that fort didn't last too very long before they made another one, didn't they? Yep, comes in, what, Fort Nelson? Fort Nelson. Right. And, Absolutely. Uh, so uh, they're growing, place is growing. I, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't expect you to possibly know this question, but how many forts ended up in the area do you think uh, um that i know of just the two mm -hmm. but you know fort nelson was at uh, kind of the middle a little bit north of main street there in louisville um between seventh and eighth streets it's kind of where the uh um the louisville science center is it's right just a little bit east of the uh the uh the fraser museum they're really close to the louisville slugger hall you know, <laughs> museum mm -hmm. there. But if you've been them, if you go to those areas, it's, you know, people like me and you, Jameson, you know, we go to these areas and we see these big cities, we see stoplights, we see trash mm -hmm. all over the ground, but we also see a fort that was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and well, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for those historical markers driving around. It's probably not a safe way to drive, but you know, <laughs> I'll be going down 150, and I'm like, there's a historical marker there, there, and I'm itching to drive over and just read them, but you know, it's probably not safe driving. But when I pop, they pop up, <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. So, um, so you got the forts there, and then kind of the reason why we're doing this story right now is because on May the first, 1780. You know, uh, uh, 241 years ago and 11 days ago, I guess, um, Louisville becomes chartered. There you go. It becomes a town. And they name it. Who do they name it after? King Louis. King Louis the Sixteenth of France. Yeah. Now, you got Louisiana. You got St. Louis. You got Louisville. All this stuff. Bourbon yeah. County. You get all this stuff popping up over these French names. Uh huh. Why? Who, why? Who, who's butt are they kissing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh. What? The King of France, who at the time was very instrumental in helping the American cause. Mm -hmm. The American Revolution uh, is raging. So well, why, why not name everything after the French guy who's helping out? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, hey, you know, hey, you name me that something after me, I might give you a little more money, a little more men and stuff like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, so I assume, you know, this the city's kind of getting named. Uh, people are going to start moving in. A lot of people start to, how many people start to kind of flock to Louisville? Not very many. Not huh. very many in the beginning. Now, Louisville, we know, is by far the biggest city in Kentucky. But in the beginning, it didn't start off that, that way. Do you, you know, why not? 
Uh, I would say maybe the, uh, well, I don't know. I was going to say location, but the location would seem to be pretty accurate. Great but spot. But it is kind of farther away, like we were saying before, from the first early settlement. So I don't know. What, what's your thought? Well, the, you know, the, what, what, what a lot of people don't realize is, is that Spain, not France, mm. Spain controlled uh, the Mississippi. And they they controlled what we could we call today the Louisiana Purchase, and would not allow American traffic on the river uh, to go past, say, Vicksburg or something like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, most of the, the settlements was further east from Louisville, so it was harder to ship goods upriver than downriver. Mm-hmm. But uh, it just wasn't this special place now. We know in 1799, a leader in Spanish, Missouri. Missouri, what the heck? Well, about a year year or two later, that gets ceded to the French, and the French are in control of that. And then in 1803, they sell that area to the United States. There you go. Free travel. Ready to open her up. So, that, that, so that's the biggest reason why it didn't explode right off the bat. I think in, in 1800, I think uh, Louisville had 383 people or so, but Lexington had over 1,700 people, wow. six times yeah. larger. Yeah, which I so, guess, you know, that makes that makes sense. If um, there's no way to travel, I guess, west of Louisville, why go to Louisville when everything else is kind of on the east side? So, yeah. Just didn't take off right off the bat, didn't it? Nope. But, nope. Uh, <laughs> so in, in this early city of Louisville, they have a fire department, right? Yeah, and they founded the fire department in the first year of existence. I thought that was that's pretty interesting, isn't it? In 1780 <laughs> kind of thing. They got their priorities straight. Uh, let's go ahead and make a fire department right off the bat. <laughs> I, can, I can understand. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 1783, um, getting into what, 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 what starts, uh, popping up? Well, people started to move outside the fort and these are things that, uh, it's really interesting to think about because, uh, this is about the time that Abraham Lincoln's grandfather, Abraham Lincoln moved to about that area. Mm-hmm. This area was constantly getting bombarded by native American attacks. We, we think about Native American attacks here in central Kentucky, but it was really getting bombarded right on the mm-hmm. river, right across from important uh, Shawnee villages and things like that. And uh, it was constantly getting invaded by, but, but until the Revolutionary War ended, then in 1783, people started to feel a little bit uh, um, safer. Yeah. 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 So in, in 1783, I guess Daniel Broadhead set up his first uh, general store outside of the fort. Before that, everybody's living in the fort, you know, kind of thing. Uh, well, that is kind of a long time. You think three years, everybody uh, is kind of staying in the fort more than outside, it, it, which, I mean, it was probably a bit more uh, violent and risky. So, uh, you know, it's understandable. Um, yeah, so uh, th- they start – expanding which would be a natural thing at once uh, it's more safe uh, they start expanding um then what, what's built next what comes after the first uh, they get outside well, the fort where they got to put jonathan cessna you know built his first house outside the fort he's known as the first person kind of like uh, nathaniel hart is known as being the first house outside of boonesboro but i think mm-hmm. you're getting into the 1784 the first courthouse is built yeah, in that courthouse right yeah and it was a big big uh, mega Mega building, wasn't it? They built stone and sixteen times twenty log cabin. Is that what you mean by mega building? <laughs> yeah, sixteen by twenty log cabin, and that was the center of operations there in Louisville, kind of thing. And that's pretty amazing to think about. Uh, um, just to, and if you've been to you know Danville, you know you see mm-hmm. the first uh, oh, yeah. state courthouse there too. So in Kentucky, yeah. So at this point, Louisville. Uh, what, what would you say house wise? How many houses? Well, right then at 17, it, it grew quick right there in the beginning. I think uh, there in, uh, at this point, 1784, they had 63 finished houses. 
um, 37 partially finished houses and about over a hundred log cabins. And uh, yeah. this is basically ends up being about a couple hundred families that are living there yeah. in 1784. I wonder, have you ever seen one of those, you know, population maps or videos where it shows like the population growing over time? Absolutely. Uh, I would like to, I'd like to see one of those of Kentucky, just Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that'd be my own personal. Hey, hey uh, you want to take a quick break here? And um, uh, we got a good video about. Well, I, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready for that uh, video yeah. yet. But we're getting pretty okay, close. Okay, we're getting close. All right, all right. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we're getting really close to that. So, uh 1785, the next year, the town of Shippingport uh, was incorporated. Now, Shippingport uh, is actually on the islands there, and r right there, it's it's very important for shipping goods up and down river right there, and it's its own town. And then in 1790, the first church was established. There you go. Uh, well, do we know, I uh, assume, do we know, do you know what the church was by chance? I don't, but I find it interesting right. that, uh, you know, 1790, the first church was yeah, founded. Ten years. ten years, that's a while not to have a, you would I mean, think uh, there'd be a church a little sooner than that. Yeah, I've talked about a lot of different communities where the church is one of the first things it's established. Yeah. It's put this up before the courthouse, a, at least. <laughs> this is, as a genealogist, I read in between the lines all the time to get the real story. This is a great microcosm of what the heck the community was like back then. This yeah. is a rowdy, rowdy bunch <laughs> of backwoodsmen, frontiersmen, people, entrepreneurs, you know, yeah. people of hunter trappers, people living out in the daggone backwoods, and they're just not worried about the settling down, having a church right now. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, so. they're, they're just worried about getting a leg up and getting in, getting up in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that tells you the, the, the type of community this is. Uh, you know, the tavern was there long before the church. So church, um, tavern, post office, what's next? Church, post, post office, 1795. Um, in 1798, the Spanish mm -hmm. trade regulations were lifted and you were allowed to now ship your goods all the way down river to the port of New Orleans. Basically mm -hmm. what we would call like NAFTA of today. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and 1798, that was Pinckney's treaty that was signed. You, most people don't know about Pinckney's treaty. Are you familiar with that one? No, uh, no I do not know about Pinckney. Pinckney's Treaty is basically uh, what established the lines of Spanish Florida and the United States. Uh, it was signed in gotcha. Madrid and, and Spain. Mm -hmm. But in that treaty, it allowed for American trade to go down river. 1798. Remember, we said Boone came to the St. Louis area in 1799. Mm -hmm. A few years later, turns over to the French. A lot of people don't realize that all this stuff that's going on out in the back country and stuff of people that have settled there. But... Mm -hmm. That ends up at that point in time when trade can go downriver instead of upriver, Louisville begins to have its boom there right there with the 1800. And boom, it does, right? Well, well, you said this already, but at this time, Lexington had about 1700. Louisville had about 359. Yep, and 1800. So big lopsided population. When, when do you think of it today? Well, Louisville metro area is about double the size of the Lexington metro area. So, yeah, and, you know, it's definitely uh, a boom and it's even had a little bit of a decline. But we'll talk about that here in a second. 1803, mm -hmm. the, the Louisiana Purchase happens. The United States takes over uh, this huge, huge area of, of, uh, of territory there. And uh, President Jefferson hires these guys, uh, Lewis and Clark. To, they gotta uh, go explore. They gotta go explore, and they left and recruited their members, the nine men of Kentucky, um, right there from Louisville. And now we're finally ready for that uh, quick break. So right. stay with us. Watch this video here. This is right across the river from Louisville, but it tells a big, big story that Louisville is a big part of. So I'll meet you guys on the other side. From right here is where their epic adventure began. 
Hey everybody, this is Russ from Family Tree Nuts, and I'm at the Falls of the Ohio State Park outside of Clarksville, Indiana, on the banks of the Ohio River, just across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm at the location of the retirement home of General George Rogers Clark. Many of us are familiar with the words Lewis and Clark. They're part of American culture and heritage, and right here is where their journey began. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson worked out a deal with France that became known as the Louisiana Purchase. President Jefferson appointed his aide, Meriwether Lewis, to lead an expedition to explore the new Louisiana Purchase and try to find a waterway to the Pacific Ocean. Meriwether Lewis asked his friend, William Clark, to help co-lead the adventure. William Clark was staying with his brother, General George Rogers Clark, when he received the letter from Meriwether Lewis requesting him to go on the adventure. While Lewis was back east making preparations for the journey, William Clark began to recruit men from Louisville and used his brother's house as a base camp. It surely didn't hurt recruitment that General George Rogers Clark was the conqueror of the Old Northwest, the Washington of the West, and the founder of Louisville. The men that William Clark recruited became known as the Nine Young Men from Kentucky. Their names were William Bratton, a blacksmith and a gunsmith. Later on the journey, Bratton came down with a terrible back injury and he was cured by an Indian sweat bag. John Coulter, who later became the first white man to see the steam vents and boiling mud pits in the area that became Yellowstone National Park. The brothers Joseph Field and Reuben Field, who on the journey took part in the fight with the Blackfoot Indians. Charles Floyd, the quartermaster of the trip and the only member to die while on the adventure. George Gibson, he played the fiddle on the journey and was used as an interpreter with the Native Americans using sign language. Nathaniel Pryor, who was a cousin of Charles Floyd and the first sergeant of the group. Later on the journey, he was asked to sit in on a court-martial of privates John Collins and Hugh Hall. They were accused of stealing whiskey and drinking on duty, and they were sentenced to 100 lashes. Another was George Shannon, the youngest on the adventure. Once, he got separated from the group for 16 days and almost starved to death and John Shields, the second oldest of the expedition. Later on, he spent some time hunting with Daniel Boone in Missouri. Also, an original member of the Corps of Discovery was a man named York. York was an enslaved man belonging to William Clark since childhood. He performed his duties like any other man on the journey, and he has several interesting stories from the adventure. The Corps of Discovery set off from here on October the 26th, 1803. Imagine their excitement. Now, I know I've just scratched the surface on the epic adventure that was the Lewis and Clark expedition, but I wanted to take you where they stepped off, right here, from the home of General George Rogers Clark. The names Lewis and Clark are forever ingrained into American culture, and here's where the adventure began. Family Tree Nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Like what you see? Make sure you follow us on Facebook Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. And you can find out more about us and contact us at familytreenuts.org. That was a cold <laughs> video right there. Um, there, but uh, okay. So in 1803, I, I, I like that video because it kind of, you know, Lewis and Clark recruited the men there from Louisville, the nine young men from Kentucky, because they were some rough bunches there, kind of thing. And that kind of is a snapshot of uh, what what the uh, early American West and uh, Kentucky in general was, wasn't it? Yeah, um, you know, uh, we were talking about our little. Um, a little bit more rougher, uh, you know, settlements coming in, that's, those sort of things, or people coming into settlements. Uh, I, you know, I mean, they were setting up their camp, setting up the footing to um, uh, 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 to uh, you know, I guess establish the uh, settlement there. I'm, I'm, uh, we are live, right? Yeah, it's live. It says we lost a connection with the old one, so this is a brand new live. 
I don't know if it's going back on YouTube or not, but uh, we will correct that and situate it. Uh, if you're watching this uh, video, we're, what, what we'll do for our YouTube channels is we'll put these two together and when we'll re-release the video together. Right now it's going out as two separate videos, but we'll put it as one um, here shortly. So, but uh, hey, it's live, you know, it can happen when it's live. Mm -hmm. There you go. You be prepared. Think, Do me I a favor, man. Push, don't, don't lean huh? your head too very close to the to the to the screen like that, because it yep. blinds me. I can't see my notes anymore. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I'll try to I'll try to refrain. I, I want you to stay focused. <laughs> yeah. So so if you're joining us as a new live, you missed uh, about forty minutes or so of uh, the history of Louisville. Make sure you go back and check that out. And uh, if you're checking this out now, um, you saw the other one. We appreciated that, and you're you're here to see the new stuff. So, but uh, 1807, the first newspaper, the Louisville Gazette, is founded. 1808, the first theater. 1809, they dedicated the first church building. There you go. 1809, man, they're a little, a little slow on the religion there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, it's kind of like crazy. I mean, they, they established a church there, what, 1895, but it took them 14 years to have a serious uh, uh, area there now. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, this sounds, but I mean, things are beginning to boom. What kind of growth are we talking about? Explosive. From, Explosive. Yeah. And Louisville has a, is it becomes eventually a very important religious uh, area. And, you know, you've got the Louisville Seminary there. You've got lots of different uh uh, Catholic organizations there, mm -hmm. uh, and Louisville it becomes it becomes a very important religious hub. Now that's why I just wanted to bring that up, though, is because it didn't start that way. It started out as yeah. a rough town, kind of like Dodge City, you know, kind of thing, <laughs> you know, where uh, Marshall Dillon and stuff like that out there. But uh, yeah, man, so it, it exploded because they could trade now. And then the yeah. other thing that happened, there's another reason why trade exploded in 1811. Yes. Steamboats. Steamboats. Yeah, man. There you, yeah, go. Steamboats, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, um, became extremely popular. 1811, the first steamboat called the New Orleans arrived in Louisville. But people were a little bit skeptical because, hey, man, you can go downriver pretty easy from Pittsburgh and stuff. But can you go upriver? Yeah. So uh, about 1815 or in 1815. <laughs> Huh? The steamboats helped that out going up river. Yes, absolutely. In 1815, the steamboat called the Enterprise made its way from New Orleans into Louisville. And it was captained by a man by the name of Henry Miller Shreve. Um, you may remember the town of uh, Shreveport or Shreveport, uh, uh, Louisiana, that uh, is down there. It's named after him. He has his own story. Uh, he's also somebody that I had a, a, a genealogy client with the last name Shreve. One of their goals was, how the heck am I related to this guy? And we were able to determine that they were second cousins nine times removed from the oh, uh, cool. founder of Shreve, Poor, Louisiana. Uh, um, real quick here. Another, uh, another. Carla says 400%, 400% growth um, there in Louisville from, and during that time period. So that is massive. That, that is a massive amount of uh, growth. Yeah, from nineteen, from what eighteen hundred to eighteen ten, four hundred percent growth, just then, and then it just yeah. kept going. From then on, wow. it just exploded. Louisville did, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yes, I would, I would say it uh, quite much exploded. But I mean, it, it had some hiccups in there. We'll get to those. Um, so, uh, steamboats. Though, I mean, if you're you need a steamboat, where are you going to get one from? Where are you going to? I mean, Louisville's right on the river there they need steamboats so what are you gonna do you start making them exactly <laughs> start making the own steamboats yes yeah, so louisville becomes a important hub for steamboat manufacturing you know and it was about this time that uh, 1813 new albany indiana grows or is founded 1814 the town of portland um kentucky that is now part of Louisville area there uh, becomes, uh, uh, is founded. And these areas that are manufacturing these steamboats become like a competitor almost to the city of Louisville. 
as far as growth and manufacturing and things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I mean, on all in all, all eventually comes together for the the big growth of the main, you know, the main city. I guess if you want to look at it that way, um, which is typical yeah. to any city growth. But and now and yeah. now what we go, we've talked a whole lot about Louisville here over the over the first thirty years of its existence and such, but. We're going to go pretty quickly through some things there, Louisville, because we know at this point has mass growth, and there's some big, big mm-hmm. points about Louisville. And we're going to skip over some some of the history stuff, but kind of hit on some hot points. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so uh, we got well, places growing. What do we need if a place is growing majorly? People are going to get sick. What are we going to need? The hospital. You know, in 1825, the Louisville Marine Hospital. It's founded in 1825, the Louisville Marine Hospital. And I got to tell you, as a genealogist, I have found many a times where someone's ancestor was in the Louisville Marine Hospital. Um, Later on, it becomes a Civil War hospital, and and people Mm -hmm. got sent there even after the Civil War. Why the heck was it called Marine Hospital? Wouldn't that be the ocean? Uh, I mean, it's water, right? Does it does that work? Does it work that way? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> guys working working on the on the river, you know, it was a great. It was a it was a hub to send people. There's a lot of pandemics, you know, about the cholera outbreak of eighteen yep. eighteen thirties, um, and then you know, other things like tuberculosis and stuff that uh, broke out um, to send people there. But those that were living on the river, you know, they they from all over the United States kind yeah. of thing and yeah. didn't necessarily have family that could take care of them and that's where they sent them to the Louisville Marine Hospital. Yeah. And now this next thing I'm gonna bring up is kind of astonishing when you think of the current day, but in eighteen twenty eight the population finally passed Lexington. That's forty eight years after it was established, Louisville actually became more populous than Lexington. Which is pretty amazing, I gotta say. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, because we think of it today, Lexington is no comparison to the size of Louisville, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So, yeah, finally in 1828, passed them up. Wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, and we talked, you just talked about ship, uh, Portland and uh, Shipping Port. They were then annexed or included into uh, Louisville in 1830. Uh, the, first, the first public school uh, system in Kentucky was 1829 uh, and established in Louisville. Those are we won't get on the educational system, but uh, the city is growing quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's taken off. It's absolutely taken off over just a generation of, of uh, people there. Um, in, in 1839, 1839, moving a little forward, they had a uh, something that Louisville is kind of known for today. What happened in 1839? 1839, a horse race. Yeah. <laughs> The first major horse race happened there at the uh, um, the Oakland Race Course. Ten thousand people in attendance, and this is way before the Kentucky Derby. But uh, I mean, ten thousand at that time would be quite a bit of people watching a horse race. Yeah, most definitely, kind of thing. It, it, you know, of course they went over, you know, a a mile or a couple of miles, and it went all day long, multiple races and such. But. and it's at that point that it, it, Kentucky starts to develop. Um, I mean, when you think of Kentucky, you think of horses, bourbon, and basketball. I mean, you know, kind of thing <laughs> in, in, in any particular order there. But it's at that point that Kentucky becomes a hub that for agriculture and things uh, in the bluegrass region, shipping their agriculture there on the Louisville to mm-hmm. ship on that river. So, Well, yeah, I mean, then everything flows down the river. You go to – the Mississippi and everything goes down south to Louisiana, up to New Orleans, and all that. It's kind of a, um, well, I mean, it's just it's just the way it goes. A lot of uh, commerce, I guess, is the way to say it, right? That's right. That's about Absolutely. Word, commerce. Yeah. Which is why it grew so fast. And there, in, in, in 1850, President Zachary Taylor was buried in Louisville. Why was he buried in Louisville? Uh, he was born in Virginia, but his family moved to the Louisville area. So that's why. That's but, kind of a bummer right there. Cause 
you know, Virginia is Virginia and Ohio is, is known kind of a nickname of the uh, mother of presidents. But, uh, you know, Zachary Taylor was born in Virginia, but he lived his, from his youth on, you know, on there. And, to, and he's a Kentuckian. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why he's born. But, you know, when hero the of the Mexican he, what, American. Um, what'd you say? One of the he- heroes oh. of the Mexican American War. Yeah, 12th president of the U.S. too. So um, we're moving. We're moving into the 1850s, um, which is, this is a surprising stat because we keep, keep talking about population. But Louisville was the tenth largest city in the nation. Uh, Kentucky was the eighth in population, which is now the 26th. But um, we can get into yeah. that another day. But um, well, yeah. well Jameson, I wanted to bring that up because you have you have brought that up multiple times in in, in stories and things that we did. Um, here we are just, you know, 150 years ago, and Kentucky is a major, major player in Kentucky politics, or in, in U.S. National. Yeah. Federal politics. You know, you said it's the yeah. eighth largest city in Kentucky, or eighth largest state in Kentucky. Now it's the 26th. Um, you know, it's it not as big of a player at all in uh, American politics. But at this yeah. time, major player. Big time, big time. Well, you got, you know, President, not you know, uh, Zachary Taylor wasn't born in Kentucky, but you know he was from Kentucky. You have Henry Clay that um, had been major in politics as well. Um, and was Cal? Was let's see, who? Uh, I mean, Breckenridge was he the vice president yet? He wouldn't be yet. Not right. he will. Well, he wasn't the, about that time. But anyway, you know, I mean, Kentucky is a big player. I mean, they were. That's there's no. I mean. And a lot of it, I would give credit to Henry Clay, of course, but um, yeah, Kentucky was booming. I mean, it was literally uh, one of the biggest places. Yeah, Transylvania was booming. People was wanting to come to Transylvania. All that uh, Louisville was becoming a big city. Anyway, that, that we're getting off topic. Louisville. Well, and, and any other boom town, any place that's throughout American history, any place that's booming, there is a certain segment of the population. There are certain new segment of the population that moves to that area uh, because there's lots of jobs that are available. They need lots of labor jobs. And who usually does uh, menial labor tasks? Well, usually uh, immigration or immigrants will, would be the one um, uh, that would do those kind of jobs that other people don't want to do, which brings us to, um, well, are we going over to 1855 yet? Is that what yeah, that's, that's where, where we're, we're at. Yeah. So, Immigrants are flocking to Louisville. Um, the population is growing, and then go uh, listen to a show on that. Uh, has it been about a month ago? Two months ago? Uh, I, I, we froze up there, but I think you were bringing up Bloody Monday. Oh yeah, so you didn't hear any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, so, they uh, might have, I didn't, but uh, folks <laughs> might have heard that. But, uh, so well, it's worth repeating. So yeah, uh, immigrants were flocking to Louisville. Uh, the city was growing, of course. Um, Bloody Monday happened, which we did a, did a show on that. So um, if uh, you would like to learn a little more about Bloody Monday, check that show, which was probably what two months ago, month ago, we talked about Bloody Monday. Yeah, we did that. Uh, you know, Germans and the Irish uh, versus the Know Nothings, the, uh, the 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 wasps. You know, the wasp, kind of thing. Yeah. Tons and then, of people. Uh, you know, big riot, and then um, people, immigrants moved. Louisville kind of had a setback, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it kind of went went a little down down for a little bit. It picked itself back up, of course, um, uh, during that time. But it was a it was a bit of a rough time, um, man. We're getting close to the hour hour mark. Well, I we're think we can go ahead and finish up because we got some quick bullets uh, here. I really think we can right. finish this up here. We're rolling into the Civil War uh, of Louisville, and uh, Louisville was a big Confederate stronghold, wasn't it? Uh, no, no Union stronghold, big time. <laughs> Union, yeah, absolutely. Uh, major union supporter, even those people in the area that owned slaves actually were supporters of the union uh, for, mm-hmm. for, for many reasons that we won't go in major details tonight, but Louisville was never attacked. Yeah, you know, very, which I mean, I guess the, I guess then you know, I don't know the Civil War knowledge 
to the greatest, but I, I guess they never really got that far north in that area. You know, Perryville, I guess we've yeah. been pretty close. Yeah. Lots of, you know, John Hunt Morgan was in Brandenburg and then eventually mm -hmm. uh, invaded Indiana there kind of thing. But they okay. never, yeah. all the way, in. Sue Mundy, you know, was captured there. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Spencer County there and brought into uh, Louisville to hang. But, uh, you know, it was definitely an important area for the Civil War, but uh, was constantly occupied by Union forces and was a stronghold, uh, probably mm -hmm. due to the fact that uh, something that uh, I don't think we've, talked about was the uh L &N railroad oh yeah yeah that's right no we didn't bring that up but yeah got the railroad. railroad put in there in 1850 um mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. made louisville a major uh a hub you know kind of thing yeah um for 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 travel and things so it was as place it was a stronghold the union had to hold if they're going to yeah. hold kentucky they had to have louisville mm -hmm. and uh it's never uh greatly threatened i think lexington was uh was definitely occupied by the Confederates a time or two. So, um, mm -hmm. 1875. So we, get the, we get to the big horse race, one that just happened, right? What, what, the big horse race, uh, was that uh, the one there at uh, Wayne Whitley's place, right? Uh, <laughs> there. Oh, no, this is, this is the big one, man. The, the run for the roses. The first Kentucky Derby is held, 1875. Yeah, the absolutely. Louisville. To, to this day, you know, kind of thing, uh, mm -hmm. the Kentucky Derby. And uh, who, 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 start, who started the, the Kentucky Derby? Well, uh, the uh, Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr., which is very interesting. I mean, he's got a pretty strong lineage that he was the um, grandson of William Clark from the Lewis and Clark Expedition and the grand nephew of George Rogers Clark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty big pedigree. So he was a, a uh, rich kid, you know, kind of a playboy. You know, if you, <laughs> if you follow his story, he made many visits to Europe and stuff. He didn't live a normal life, I'll say that. You know, founded uh -huh. the uh, Louisville Jockey Club there and uh, uh, created the uh, the first Kentucky Derby that's uh, continuing in existence today. 10,000 people were there in, in, in uh, attendance. And then one yeah. year after that, 1876, uh, something that existed today also was founded, wasn't it? The National League was founded with the, the Louisville Grays as yeah. a, one of the uh, charter members, but uh, no, you know the, uh, the the Louisville Bats is that the team that's there now? The Louisville Bats, yeah, yeah, the Triple A team. We're talking baseball now. <laughs> you know, it was founded. Louisville was such a major city; it had a major league team, mm -hmm. what we call yeah. Major League, and. Uh, um, something happened. There was a guy, you know, that uh, uh, Pete Browning, he was known as, uh, you know, the, you know, one of the best baseball players around was kind of in a slump. Mm -hmm. And he wanted a, a bat, right? Or uh, uh, well, he couldn't the, understand uh, why he was in a slump, but, uh, you know, <laughs> a, fellow, a fellow by the name of Bud Hellerich uh, was at the game and uh, his dad owned a furniture store. So he went back home and uh, fashioned out of white oh. ash a nice uh, baseball bat for him. Mm -hmm. And there you go. There you have, that's how uh, uh, it to went on a terror. <laughs> and uh, he, he, uh, the orders of the bats went crazy. And then you have the yeah. Louisville Slugger. Louisville Slugger. That? Yeah. And uh, we've got a uh, story that we, we've got it, everything, the script's all ready to be made on, on the Louisville Slugger. Uh, that's coming there, a major story there. But you know, when you think of Louisville, that's one of the things you think about is the Louisville Slugger and how that came about. Um, from 1883 to 1887, they had a uh, important uh, segment of the World's Fair there in Louisville. Southern Exposition, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Highlighted by Thomas Edison's light bulbs. So that's pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty big connections here. Yeah, Thomas Edison lived in Louisville for a time there too. You know, so. It's kind of telling you this is an important city. You know, it was a Chicago and New York, you know, of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then in 1890, something horrific happened in Louisville, didn't it? Big old tornado comes plowing through. Big F4. So uh, kills, uh, what, 74 to 120 people? So a lot yeah. or a lot. Like I'm, I'm sure. In history here, there's controversy as to how many people were killed. But yeah. 
I mean, there was 766 buildings were demolished uh, by this tornado. Wow. That's a that's a lot. And um, you can assume hundreds injured. If, if that many people died, you're gonna have hundreds of people injured. Yeah, and and there was a lot of deaths in one particular location too. That's where it's uh, mm-hmm. became one of the most deadly spots from a natural disaster. Yep. 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 Yeah, 55 people died when the uh, Fall City Hall collapsed. 55 people. Know, the that is a lot. Shoot. I mean, we think about, you, know, you hear about tornadoes and stuff, but my gosh, man, you imagine, you know, kissing yeah. your wife goodbye and she went to work and, you know, and her mm. place of business fell down upon her. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a lot. 1893. Patty and Mildred Hill wrote a famous song. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Um, Happy uh, your birthday, birthday was a few months ago, right? So, so my birthday? birthday. Yeah, yeah, a couple months, months ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> a half months ago, yeah. But uh, yeah, we did do a video about uh, about that too, so you can uh, Google that uh, history of the Happy Birthday song. Uh, the ladies they wrote the Happy Birthday song. Um, there's a whole lot of more to that story there. And then in uh, 1910, yeah. you're, we're finally in the 1900s here, but uh, your favorite place was established. The Waverly Hills Sanitarium um, opened up, which was, you know, was a tuberculosis hospital, correct? And it yes. was closed, but you came to it now because it's haunted. It's haunted. It's a haunted yeah, place. and then on Halloween, they have a lot of people love to go tour that place. It's one of the most haunted places in Kentucky. Uh, it's still there. It's been. It was vacant from the '60s on. You know, I think, uh, but it's a pretty popular spot for supposed hauntings of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So uh, then we get um, World War One camp. Uh, it was a uh, uh, Taylor. Wait, can't wait. Camp Taylor. Uh, yeah, after, Camp Taylor. Zachary Taylor. Uh, um, you know, kind of thing. Just west of there. Now we start getting into. You know, uh, Fort Knox being established and such in the mm-hmm. area, the importance. Um, and then 1920, one of my favorite places on earth was established. Oh, no zoo. You like going to the zoo, man? Yeah, man. My family's had a membership to the Louisville Zoo for, gosh, I don't know, 17, 18 years. Maybe longer. <laughs> maybe longer. But a uh, great place, man. You know, such an awesome place. Uh, my daughter was actually the volunteer of the year one year there when she was. Oh. Uh, years old but uh, awesome place but in 1920 in 1939 you know in the height of the great depression the actual zoo was uh um was closed down and it didn't open again wow. until i think 1969 so wow so, i mean i guess do you think they just shipped all the animals off for a while or well i you know a lot of there. these groups started off a lot smaller kind of thing yeah. you know in the beginning so it wasn't a huge establishment there but then in 1923, your favorite thing on earth was created. Uh, I don't know about that, but the hot brown, I mean, like, I know a lot of people like the hot brown, but it was introduced at the Brown Hotel. I, I, I mean, I guess it's okay. It's not my favorite. <laughs> you don't like the hot brown? I'd say whenever I'm at a restaurant and I don't know what to order, I can always do well with the hot brown. <laughs> so uh, those of you watching that don't know what that is, a Kentucky hot brown is, they call it an open face sandwich, basically two pieces of bread. Some ham, some cheese, some special sauce, bacon. Some people put tomatoes on there. Then massively covered with there you go. eight thousand calories of cheese on top of that, and uh, baked to a nice crispy on there, and it is spectacular. <laughs> so that's what a Kentucky hot brown is, but it is invented at the Brown Hotel there in Louisville. So there's a lot of people I guarantee you that eat Kentucky hot browns that don't know where it came from. So I, I I I would bet that yes. Uh, so in uh, 1931, the Belle of Louisville uh, shows up, the oldest steamboat in operation, right? Yeah, and it's it's still there today. I know lots of people that have uh, taken tours. You can take a tour on it. Uh, uh, take a ride on there and get married on there. The Belle of Louisville. Man, I think it's almost 100 years old. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, get on that. <laughs> it's safe. It's a wonderful time. And then we roll <laughs> to another tragic in Louisville. Mm-hmm. Great flood of 37. So, uh, wow, an evacuation of 175,000 people, 90 deaths, uh, 70% of the city covered. So, that's a lot of people. 
Seventy percent of the of the city was buried in water there, and uh, a massive flood, tons of loss of, of of life and business, and tons of people displaced and stuff. Major, major flood, a whole nother show in itself, right there. The Nineteen thirty-seven flood, and uh, not too very long after that, Louisville starts a little bit of a decline. Yeah, I mean, I you know. Uh, people get, I get basically are moving out of the city, you know, into the, I guess, the suburbs, if you want to call it that, um, and not so much in uh, the metro Louisville area. Um, but that is fixed in a way. In 2003, the city uh, merges with the county. So you get the full Jefferson uh, metro, metro area population thing, something like that. Yeah, those who don't know what that means, basically the city government and the county government merged. They have, you know, mm -hmm. basically the same fire departments, police departments, and every other thing share the same taxes and revenue and such. Lexington and Fayette are the are also that way as of, I don't know, remember when that happened, maybe right about that same time, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah. They so, yeah. And one other thing, too, like a, a lot of people would just think of, you know, Louisville being the only city in Jefferson County, but you actually have a lot of other, you know, metro areas like Jefferson Town and um, and others. But now they're all under the same government to say it like yeah, that. Yeah, St. Matthews, uh, you know, yeah. uh, um, um, Lively, Shively, you know, over there. If you've been to Lively, Shively, you know, kind of thing. It's a special kind of area over there. But uh, people that have been there, lively, shively, uh, always chuckle when we bring that up. But uh, <laughs> Portland, stuff like that are all part of that. Uh, um, you know, it, we've just scratched the surface of the history of Louisville. Um, what is oh, it yeah. today? What is it they, that, as in? Well, I mean, like, uh, you know. Largest city in Kentucky. Uh, second largest city on the Ohio River. And the 29th yeah, largest. Yeah in uh u.s so 29th largest so at one time it was the 10th largest there yep. um, now it's yep. the 29th largest so it's shrank in uh, importance and such mm -hmm. but uh that uh that happens as population moves further west and you know and shipping country and grew like country gets bigger population move all yeah. that stuff considered yeah absolutely so definitely important american city um we could talk about the history of louisville for six months <laughs> on here but uh we've definitely hit the hot points on there and we we already did one we did one day of louisville history for an episode so <laughs> yeah oh yeah so covering, covering the entire history is, is a lot Absolutely. but you know we, we'll, really we'll, get, we'll get to it eventually uh I do a few people said came on here said dave brown said that he uses turkey for his hot brown not ham so hmm that's interesting yeah. You know, my wife switched to uh, turkey with a lot of things like tacos and spaghetti, you know, turkey oh. meats later and stuff. I don't know about my hot brown, though. I like my pig, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Actually, definitely an important place. Is Louisville part of Kentucky or is it part of the Midwest? It's in Kentucky, man. I, I claim it. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, yeah, yeah, go Dirty Birds, right? So uh, I don't know. We don't. We don't. I don't claim. I don't claim. No. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, all right. Anything else you want to say about Louisville before we head out of here tonight? Uh, no, not right off. I mean, I, I always like going up to Louisville. Uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff to check out. Uh, a lot of good history there. Um, we'll. I mean, we'll talk about Louisville history. I know for sure on the podcast and on here too as well. So. More to come. Yeah, man. So we'll see you here, guys, next week. We, you know, hope that uh, you enjoyed this brief history of Louisville. And, uh, hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. John Martin was born October 11, 1811, in Lee County, Virginia. He became a lawyer and moved to Harlan County, Kentucky. He lost his first political campaign for the State House of Representatives in 1830 to John Bates. In 1835, he married Elizabeth Lackey and they had one son, 
Alexander Martin, who was also a legislature for a term. In 1841 and 1847, he won election to represent Floyd County. Martin was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives from 1845 to 1849. He ran for lieutenant governor in 1848 as the Democratic candidate, but lost to John Helm. Martin was in the state Senate from 1855 to 1859, representing Floyd, Morgan, Pike, and Johnson County. He was a delegate at the 1856 Democratic Convention in Cincinnati. He supported Lynn Boyd for president over James Buchanan. He was very outspoken for his constituents and challenged the Know-Nothing Party during its rise. He died in Prestonsburg on December 23, 1862, and was buried in May Cemetery. I hope you've enjoyed learning about John Preston Martin. He was a lawyer and a politician who stood up for the people of Eastern Kentucky. He served Kentucky in many positions, and Martin County, the 116th county in Kentucky, was named after John Martin. Don't forget to try out audibletrial.com slash kyhistorypod to get a free book of your choosing. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more Kentucky history content. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Find us on these social media platforms and check out the Kentucky History Podcast on these podcast platforms for more in-depth history of Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.